people say, I want to take an event and I just want to do an event, pass the leads to sales. It's the wrong mentality. You need to do the event, but then how can you create so much content out of that? If I drive a million impressions per month, just from my organic content, if you have 20, 30, 40 employees, think about what that paid media value is over what you would actually spend on running paid ads. We think the brand telling the creator what to do, but the mm. creator should be empowered to tell the brand what they want to do. All right. Another session here at the Demo Stack Studios. I'm here with my good friend, Nick Bennett. We are here at the B2BMX conference and we're shooting some podcast style content here. Nick, why don't you tell the audience a little bit of uh, where you're at today and what you do for the company? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. So I am the senior director of ELG event-led growth and evangelism at AirMeet. So we are a virtual event platform for making people's lives easier. I don't know if you all coined this term. I've heard Mark post quite a bit about it, but it's this idea of event-led growth. Yeah, event. So it's, it's, it's interesting because no one else is talking about that, yeah. but for us, it's putting the attendee first. So how do you center everything around it? So the experience, the engagement, the data, everything is putting the attendee first, which goes back to a people first strategy, shifting from a company first, go to market to a people first, go to market. And how you do that is you put the attendee first. So the content, the experience, the sponsors, everything focuses around the attendee, what they want to get out of this. What does that look like in terms of Marketers are listening, being like, cool, Nick told me to put the attendee first, right? Events led growth, I'm going to do this. How do they actually put that into practice? I think it's just figuring out what type of style event you want to do. Because so many okay. times people say, all right, I want to create content or I want to take an event and I just want to do an event, pass the leads to sales. It's the wrong mentality. You need to do the event, but then how can you create so much content out of that? So think of micro content, think of clips, social media. How can you create blog posts? Ultimately, it's creating an experience with someone. So they say, wow, like, okay, I get it. Like, your me isn't trying to sell me. They're trying to create an experience that kind of like gets me to engage that much further. What is that like world-class experience, right? Is, is there an event that you could share of like, this is what we think created a really good experience and maybe it led to something? What would it look like? Hey, this is like a world-class event experience we do this series called power hour and okay. so we do one per month and so it's focused on customers as well as like high intent leads ultimately to convert them and so it's really about actionable insights so i'll give you a good example so a couple of weeks ago we did it on insights and so analytics so our platform we focus a lot on the analytical piece because as marketers so many people want to do events but the, all they do is take the lead list yep. pass it over to sales how can you actually action that event intent is what we call it and so we do these power hours and we broke it down into segments. So we bring a customer on, have them share their story. Again, like okay. social proof is right there. Yeah. Then we bring someone from product on, get them to share the roadmap. So again, you're future proofing where it is, where everything is going. People know, great, I'm going to attend this event. I'm going to see six months down the road, 12 months down the road, what AirMeet's actually going to build to make my life easier. And then we usually do another um, series or segment from it where it's just more of how do you actually action this? So we brought on our head of SDRs as well as someone from um, kind of like a data analytics company. We talked about how do you actually action all of this if you're a customer that wants to take analytics and actually do something with it. So when I think of event intent, for example, how can I be at an event and trigger an alert in Slack or Teams or email mm. that will say, hey, your target account is at this event right now. You should jump in. Don't pitch them, but just be like, hey, how's your experience? What did you think of that session with Arthur? Was it awesome? Let me know if I can do anything for you. I'm a resource to you. You're not waiting till post-event when you're going to get bombarded. I mean, think of B2B MX. Like, how many vendors are going to email you post-event? Yeah. Whereas if you could action this real-time, the conversion is going to be so much higher and you throw chili piper on that and the conversion goes through the roof. That's that's what I'm talking about. This is this is really interesting because I think you mentioned a bunch of different types of events there and I think this would be really interesting for the audience to understand of like how do you even look at like the types of content you create the purpose behind it? Do you guys follow a specific framework around the content and the events that you design in terms of their purpose? Yeah, so we base it on like the audience that we want to invite. So like Power Hour, for example, is for high intent leads. Again, they're, they're hand raisers already, not okay. customers. They haven't converted. And then customers, how can we expand those? How can we kind of like basically grow, maybe even like churn prevention as well if they know future proofing what's coming. Okay. Um, so we have that piece. Then we do another series called Eventions, which is all about 
low intent, medium intent, how do we basically take kind of like that top of funnel yep. and get them to want to raise their hand? So we bring on subject matter experts like yourself, and then we can see, all right, great, from our ICP and non-ICP, what does that breakdown look like? And then we grade it on an A, B, C scale. So mm -hmm. for us, if it's an ICP A and B, those convert at a way higher rating than someone that's like a C non-ICP. So we use kind of like a dual funnel perspective. We don't use MQLs. Yeah. We just basically say high, medium, or low intent, and then it moves over to an SQL. This is really fascinating. So yeah, I think um, we've had a pretty good idea of this, this event-led growth and combined with event intent, what that could mean. And you've given some amazing use cases. My mind is running of like, yeah, whether customers are attending that, right? And they're primed for maybe an upsell or cross-sell, whatever it is, um, obviously from net new, if they're progressing through and they're engaging. I feel like you're also at the forefront of something that I'm super excited about. I think you inspired me to to think about more and more is this idea of creator-led growth. So maybe define that for the audience and then we can jump into yes. what that means. So creator-led growth means to me, it's, it's really people first. How can you amplify the people that work for the brand to drive results? So, so many people think of like, okay, great. Like, you know, it's the company sending emails. It's the company replying to G2 reviews. It's the company putting out an ebook. But what about the authors behind it and the creators within the company? Now, if I drive a million impressions per month, just from my organic content, yeah. think about if you have 20, 30, 40 employees, or even five employees, think about what that paid media value is over what you would actually spend on running paid ads on like LinkedIn or any of these other platforms. Yeah. Amplifying the way people buy today has changed. We all know that. It's like, you know, I'm going to want to buy Chili Piper or renew with Chili Piper because of Arthur and everyone else that works there. Ultimately, I mean, yeah, the brand is cool, but I have built relationships with you. Yeah. If you were to leave, I'm probably going to want to go look at whatever company you go to ultimately. And that's where relationships come in and creators are bringing that next wave where it's not just, you're not an order taker anymore. You're not just doing deliverables for a brand. You're going a little bit further and you're integrating it into the larger marketing strategy. I feel like you're a great example of this, of how you even actioned it the first week of AirMe, right? Where it's like, there is this hype of where's Nick's, where's Nick going to, by the way, I'm going to announce it. And oh, the first week I'm there, I'm going to hop on with Mark to talk about both these ideas of event creator led growth. And what a great way, a campaign of getting your following of, I don't know, 30, 40,000 now. Of Almost like, 50. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> of getting them in, taking them on the journey with you. Now I'm guessing so much more people are, are aware of what AirMe does. And now it's on our radar. Um, is there any like stats that you can share from that first week of like, did you see a huge jump in organic traffic? What's, what's going yeah, on so there? We actually, in that first week, we saw 800 new followers to our LinkedIn company page, huge. actually. Huge. So we, we saw leads coming through LinkedIn company page that never happened before. We wow. saw our engagement rate skyrocket. That first event that Mark and I did, we actually had someone convert an $18,000 deal that closed, that came from that specific event. Oh, yeah. And again, using self-reported attribution, we're seeing that like between mm -hmm. Mark and myself, like our name shows up on the self-reported attribution forums. Like I've been there seven weeks. I've probably seen my name about 14, 15 times already. Wow. And I mean, for us, our goal is to double down in North America and Canada. And like, we want to grow yeah. and we want to grow the awareness. One for, for the audience that maybe isn't familiar with self-reported attribution. Can you explain that? Yeah. So when you go to request a demo or anything, there's a form that says, how did you hear about us? Make that an open text field. Yeah. Do not put a drop down because as marketers, you know, we're lazy. We're going to click that first thing. Yeah. But you'll make, you have to make it a required question. So again, we can get so many insights. I saw you at this event with Arthur. Then I listened to this podcast. Then I attended this event. Great. Now you know on the journey that they went on to yeah. get there. And you can double down on what channels are actually working. I want to go back to what you said about creator-led growth. And you said for them to drive results. Now, I know that can mean a bunch of different things, right? And, and each campaign can have different purposes, but maybe this is how you're thinking about creator-led studios. Maybe this is just an example, but let's say you do work with a creator. What results can you, are you hoping that they produce that you can kind of expect? Is it more just that top of funnel awareness? Is it a little further down funnel? Talk to me about how you're driving results. So I think you need to think of the outcomes first. What do you actually want to achieve with this? Yeah. Is it deal acceleration? Is it top of funnel? Is it, you know, churn prevention, anything like that? For us, we want to 
I like to think of it like as an art studio. So like you think of an art studio and the artists go to an art studio to collaborate. And then you take your art that you create and you go on the road to art shows. So we want to be the place where people go to collaborate and then they go and they distribute that on the channels. Now, the way that we benefit is referrals. So, you know, they're going to be driving referrals to us. We get the brand awareness piece of it because we're going to be producing a lot of the content. So like our brand will go everywhere. They'll give us shout outs on LinkedIn, other yeah. social media channels. But ultimately, we want to give them a starting point for where, like say, hey, I started at AirMeet. They gave me the chance. And then I went on to be a keynote speaker or something like that. And so we're putting them through a very intense creator training that we're partnering with someone on. And so like they go through one-on-one -on -one style and cohort style training mm -hmm. to be a creator. So you're almost like creating this. I think it makes so much sense too, because obviously you're using your platform, right? To, to showcase all of these events. So on one side, there's the, the entertaining concept, right? Of like, hey, maybe I follow this creator. They're now creating a show on through AirMeet. And get an experience the the platform itself is it just exposing them to the event platform enough to get them to say hey i actually want to do this myself with air meter it's yeah i mean honestly the best demo that you can give is giving someone to experience the platform yeah. so ultimately like the content that we're going to create has nothing to do with air Meet, funny enough so it's like a sub brand of it but like yeah. we want to be the place that will just like give them the resources. So this isn't going to be someone for you know, 50, 60, 100,000 followers. This is for like 5,000 to like 25,000 followers on LinkedIn, like the sweet mm -hmm. spot. And if you create content, but you don't have the resources or a nice studio like this or like whatever, yeah. we're going to give you those resources free of charge. Plus, we're going to give you a referral kickback on close one deals. Mm -hmm. That's how we win. We're going to pay you monthly on top of that. And we're going to pay for your membership into this creator. Um, we're calling it like a creator kitchen. And so you're going to go and learn to be a better creator because you're still early on in your career. But we want to be that launching point that takes you to like basically stardom. This is, uh, this is getting me excited about um, what you guys are building here. Okay, let's let's dive into um, your bread and butter and uh, someone that I, I've looked up to quite a bit and probably why I started out in field marketing. Um, these field marketing events. And I think when we look at it, even from a perspective of where we're at today, right? And people are slashing budgets. Maybe they they don't want to, or they can't afford to get a booth. But you just talked about something that's very interesting there, which is it's tough to replace the face-to-face -face relationship, right? And even something as as innocent as a selfie, that goes a long way. And I've always even advocated for our sales team to be like, hey, if you can, like grab a selfie, because that's such a good follow-up of like, Hey, it was great meeting you, sending that selfie. So going back to the question of like, how should companies maybe look at their field marketing investments? I think you just laid out a really interesting playbook of you're not necessarily in sales, but you're driving revenue, right? And you're, you're getting the chance to meet face to face with your ICP. How are you, if somebody were to come to you and say, Nick, how should I think about my field marketing budget or my strategy, what would you kind of recommend? I mean, I would say, and people might not like me for this because I know we've talked about this, but like, <laughs> I still think trade show booths are work worthless, but yeah. if that's your only plan, because if you go yeah. to B B B2B MX and like you want to buy those idols, no one's bringing you in. No one's doing these activations that are like, oh, cool. I want to go talk to you. They're yeah. sitting at a table, they're scanning you, and then they're going to send an email to you after, and they're going to keep on sending you emails in a sequence that you'll never reply to. Sure. But- if you create content at the event and you mm -hmm. tie it back to your top line digital strategy and say you're running paid ads to specific accounts or you're using intent or whatever to drive specific messages, or you're using people that, again, people recognize from social media and you say, hey, seeing you, like, let's follow up on and connect you with someone from the sales team. It's a great way to people out there. But I think for me, trade shows are overpriced. I would much rather do a micro event. And I think in 2023, micro events are kind of the way. Anything else that maybe I didn't ask you that you want to leave the audience with? No, I think it's just, I think it's you have to invert your mindset. So many times we think the brand telling the creator what to do, but the mm. creator should be empowered to tell the brand what they want to do. And I think events is similar. Like 
brands have always said, I'm going to put on events with like that brand mindset. Yeah. But why not envision an attendee first experience? Mm. And so I think you can do it in a great way that your integrated strategy. So events just aren't siloed from everything else in marketing that you're doing. It's a bigger piece of the strategy. I love it. Nick, such a pleasure, man. Yeah, always, uh, always love shooting content with you. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me.